before fluorescent formations ever fomented the foundations of your firmament. That is, before the stars in your sky ever entered existence. Before the light knew what bright meant. Before the sky had a clue where up went. Before either were ever invented. I am. Before terrestrial perennials terraced your planet's territorial terrain, that is, before the plants in your ground were ever ordained, before roots were ever arranged, before fruit had a taste, before either had a name, I am. Before the ocean had a bowl, before the surf discovered its role, before the grave was made sheol, before man had a soul, I am. Before Eden was installed, before the garden serpent crawled, before the tree, before the fall, I am. For I am truth, before there ever could be false, I am perfection, before there ever could be false, I am. By all, in all, through all, all, in all, and I am to be called, I am. Before the curse usurped the ground and drove you away from the divine. Before you felt the separation between who you are and the intention of your design. Before you tried to abide in sources of death in order to find life. Before you combined yourself with any form of pleasure you could find. Before you felt so alone, before you felt so dry. Before you tried to run away from my side, I am, I am the vine. Before the cherubim ever guarded the garden Before the flaming sword was ever sharpened Before that chasm between God and man was ever widened Before you lost all hope in becoming a citizen of heaven Before all you earned was endless flame Before all you deserved was righteous pain Before you were a sheep hoping not just to be some lion's prey Before you were a lost lamb longing for a pen Longing to escape your fate I am I am the gate Before sustenance turned to gluttony and food became an enemy before attraction was based on anatomy and sex was removed from matrimony Before money became morality and greed grew into the only causality Before you were empty without me Before you tried to satisfy your appetite with anything Before you strive to feel alive by filling your strife with the fleeting vices of your fleshly devices Before your hunger for relief left pangs in your side I am, I am the bread of life before you became acquainted with pain and death Before you ever tasted loneliness Before disease destroyed what you possess Before eyes could go blind Before ears could go deaf Before you lost the one you love To the grave's unyielding cleft I am For before mankind stopped living So that they might just survive I am the resurrection and the life before that sadness that grips your mind Led you to darkness and thoughts of suicide Before that distortion of man hurt you So that you now hurt yourself Before you knew razors and wrists could create a new hell Before those wounds turned to scars And those scars became a way of life I am, I am the light For before you even knew how to sin I am where your salvation begins For before you withdrew from the path of my way before you willfully and joyously disobeyed before you betrayed the gift that I gave of that breath in your lungs that life in your airways by saying no to my love and yes to your heresy before you engaged with the enemy waged in sin with intensity before you derain my supremacy and flame my jealousy before you chose greed over my adequacy lies over my accuracy pride over my advocacy before you you chose your sinful self over me I am I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep for before you were a spotted lamb I am for I am the way before you could ever run away from my call I am the truth before you could ever walk away from my law I am the life before you could ever turn away from my cross at Golgotha's skull so I beg you now to withdraw.
Withdraw from your sin, for I am your only temptation. Withdraw from yourself, for I am making you a new creation. Withdraw from your pride, for I am ruining your reputation. Withdraw from your self-righteousness, for I am your only mediation. Withdraw from your hopes and dreams, for I am your only expectation. Withdraw from your life, for I am your crucifixion. For before all time, I am all sufficient. Before all titles, and designations to my name alone did the cosmos listen for I am Jesus I am the word I am Elohim I am the Lord I am the Christ I am Messiah I am creator I am Jehovah Jireh I'm the Lamb of God I am Emmanuel I'm the begotten son I am the Holy One of Israel I am the first fruits I am the Prince of Peace I am the bridegroom I am the King of Kings I'm the God of Abraham I'm the God of Jacob I am the Alpha, I am the Omega. I'm the Holy One worthy of praise. So withdraw into my side. Withdraw and be made mine. Withdraw and with me stay. Withdraw into my way. Hi everyone, good to see you this morning. Welcome to Chowning Church Online. And uh, we're looking forward to having a good time together, sharing together. And as somebody's already said, even though we're self-isolating, a lot of us, we don't need to remain isolated. So we're looking forward to a good time. We hope you enjoy it. And uh, it's great just to be together and to be able to share in this way as uh, in these days when we're all looking out for each other. So we hope you have a great time. We really want to welcome you and uh, we want to bring you into God's presence uh, together. So, hope you enjoy the service and uh, we'll see you again later. Thank you.
my dead and raise this life up from the dead. glad you could join us here today. Now while you're watching this video count the number of sheep that you see then post your answer on the parents whatsapp group and we'll see who's the closest. Well this is a strange way to do Sunday school and extreme team but then it's been a very strange week hasn't it? What's been about the best thing about this previous week for you and what's been the strangest? Closing school's been a bit interesting. I'm very conscious that for some of you, that means that you've finished with your previous school and when schools open up again later, you'll be moving on to a new school without properly saying goodbye to the old one or preparing for the new one. How's that making you feel? A lot of people are finding this a very worrying time because they don't know how things will turn out. When there are big worries, like coronavirus all around the world, it's very easy for us to feel small and unimportant and that nobody really cares about how we are and what we're feeling. That's why I'm very glad that we're doing the story of the lost sheep this week. The shepherd had loads of sheep, but when he discovered that one was lost, he didn't just say that it was unimportant and that it didn't matter. No, he left the other sheep somewhere safe and he went out looking for the one that was lost. This story reminds us that God cares about each one of us and, sorry, he cares about each one of us, whoever we are. If we're feeling lost, lonely or worried, he goes searching for us until he finds us and then carries us back to where we feel safe. Keep counting those sheep. I've sent an email with a pack of activities to your parents or the person who normally brings you to church. If they haven't got it, ask them to look in their spam folders because sometimes my emails land up there. In the pack, there is a Bible story. Some questions to think about and a finger puppet to make, a silly poem with sound effects for you to say, a prayer activity, a game to play, a puzzle to do, to colour in and a Mother's Day craft. You don't have to print out the whole pack, you only need to print out maybe the puzzle page if you want to do that or the picture to colour. And you don't have to do everything, you can choose what you want to do. You don't have to do it all today, you could save some activities to do in the next few days. If you want to look the story up in your Bibles, in these Bibles, it's on page 1048. And there's also a picture version of the story here. How many sheep have you counted so far? When you've done some of the activities, you might want to post a picture of your craft or a video of you playing the get one of the games or just comment about which of the activities you liked best. Your parents or the person who brings you to church has a link to a WhatsApp group and you can where you can post anything you like and then we can all share your pictures, stories and comments. I hope you enjoy doing all this 
and I'm looking forward to getting your responses. Have a really great week. Goodbye till next Sunday. Bye. In a time of desperation There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation When all is dark you help us see There is only Good morning church it's lovely that we can still do church this way and that no force of pandemic can ever stop us let us pray father we thank you for this opportunity to meet with you in this way we thank you Lord Jesus that you will build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it 
Lord, we praise you and we lift your name high. We thank you for everyone gathered around their phone or computer device. We thank you that you forgive our sins just as we forgive those that sin against us. We pray that you may provide us with our daily needs. You know each and every need that each and every one of us has because Lord, you are omnipotent, all powerful. God, you have supreme power and no limitations. You are omniscient, all knowing and omnipresent. You are everywhere at the same time by your spirit. We thank you that you will guide us during this pandemic that has affected our world. Give wisdom to the powers that be that are helping our nation tackle this problem. We pray for our leaders and for our NHS services. We pray for healing for those affected by the coronavirus. We pray for the families that have lost their loved ones from it. We pray for provision for those that are at risk of losing their jobs and those that are finding it hard to access basic items that are necessary to survive. We pray, Lord, that you bless everyone with good health, psychologically, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Father, we humble ourselves, we seek your face, and we pray that heal our land. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello. This is a pre-recorded message. As you know, we can't meet in the church on Sunday. So we're getting together and we're pre-recording our welcome and some worship and a short teaching message. So I hope that this finds you well. And I hope that you're you know, staying in touch with each other by phone. Um, and I'm starting off the season with women of faith. Now as I was thinking, what women should I bring here? What should I like, talk about this morning? And I was praying about it and I thought about Mary or Mary Madeline or Naomi. But God, when I was reading this, this woman just jumped out at me. So I was reading Luke and you'll find the woman in chapter 13, starting at verse 10 in Luke. On the Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over double and she could not straighten up. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on one of those days, not the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrite! Don't each one of you on the Sabbath untie his donkey or ox and lead them to water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for eighteen long years, be set free on the Sabbath from what has bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things Jesus was doing. So we're starting off really with an unnamed woman. Now, Jesus was there in the synagogue and he was teaching. And it's interesting, this is his last public sermon in the synagogue before the cross. So this was, he was teaching up a storm. And I think everybody would have been there. Everyone would have been wanting to listen to Jesus. And Jesus was teaching. And the synagogues were places where he went to worship and he went to pray, but it was men orientated and women weren't really allowed there not in the main area but then jesus sees this woman and he calls her forward and she comes forward and he lays his hands on her and he says be healed you are free free from your infirmities and i just think that's just a wonderful picture that jesus has for us here and now at this particular time that jesus wants to say to you come come forward to me you are free from all your infirmities you are free from what ails you. 
Now the woman that says she was bound, so if you picture, if you put your hand like that and you, you bend it, she was bound, so for 18 long years, her head faced the ground, she didn't look up. She couldn't see a sunset, she couldn't see a rainbow, she, she couldn't see faces. She was bound for 18 long years. And I think she would have been well known in the village and well known wherever she lived. And people would have been, there's that woman. And Jesus knew she was bound for, from a spirit. Did other people? Was she an outcast? But yet she still was in the temple. And she went, she didn't go to seek healing. She went to listen to what Jesus had said. By all accounts and all the, the, the commentaries, they all say that she wasn't pushing herself forward. She wasn't seeking Jesus. She was going to listen to what he had to say. So that's her faith. Her faith was, well, I, I have this affliction. I am bound, but I've heard of this man, Jesus. I've heard of his teachings. I've heard of how he preaches, and I want to hear him. It's like when you want to go and hear your favourite band or you want to hear someone and, you know, we had a conversation a few weeks ago with friends, like, who would you like to hear? What's your favourite band that you haven't heard? And you would just like to go and hear them one more time. And I think that lady who felt like this, I just want to go and hear him. Never mind that he could heal, never mind that she had heard all the healing stories. She was more interested in his teaching stories and his parables and what he had to say about the kingdom of God. So can you imagine when he called her forward? She was there, listening. She couldn't see him. She probably had never seen him, but she had heard him and heard of him, and she was hearing him there in the temple, in the synagogue. And he called her forward and he said, woman. And I, I, I love how he calls her woman. I, I feel it's an endearing term sometimes for when he was doing his first miracle, I can remember when Mary said to him, do what he says. And he turned around and said to Mary, woman, my time has not yet come. And I feel it was a term of endearment. It wasn't like woman. It was like, well, you know, woman, my time has not yet come. And I feel like it was the same. You know, when I was reading the text and thinking and praying on that, I feel it was the same phrase he used, the same soft tones, the same, you know, the voice of compassion when he called her forward. Amongst all the men, amongst all the people that were there watching, he said, woman. And he came and he laid hands on her and he healed her and she stood up and she was praising God. Oh, she was happy as you could be because... It was an unexpected blessing. It was just something wonderful. And I feel like some some of us are bound, we are bound by things. And I want to say to you, God just wants to say to you, come, come to me. Anybody who is heavy laden, anybody who is burdened, anybody who is bound, anybody who needs a fresh touch from me, come. I don't know what keeps you bound. I don't know what it is that you would need God to heal you from. You would need your affirmity to be loosened. It could be unforgiveness eating away at your end. You cannot draw close to God because of that unforgiveness. It could be that, you know, many years ago, you were spoke over and it still stays with you. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. But God is saying, come, you are good enough. I can see him. You're good enough. It might be that you've been really hurt and your heart still aches for many, many years and you kind of just seem to get that 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 fullness. And God's saying, come out, I can heal you. I can heal you. I can heal that broken heart. Whatever is binding you, whatever keeps you from that last step to be in the presence of Jesus, to be healed, to be whole, even though, you know, there's madness all around at the minute. There's, there's lots of things going on in our, our cities and our towns and our villages and you know people you know being unkind to people and then you hear great stories of people being kind but what about you in your relationship with Jesus I'm asking you the question yourself where are you what binds you it might be grief you might be stuck in grief and you might not be able just to mo to move on from that grief or unanswered prayer and God saying, just come, come to me. And for for your homework, as you'd like for this week, I want you just 
to bend over, you straighten to bend over like that and to say, Lord, free me. And ask him to free you from whatever keeps you bound. And then to stand up straight and praise the name of Jesus. There is power in praise. And God just, God just wants you to praise his name like this woman. And she was praising in her affliction. She was praising him and wanted to hear him in the temple even though she was bound over she still saw Jesus out and she praised his name and then we have the, the rulers the hypocrites you know they're, they're saying how dare you on the sabbath day how dare you on this day of the lord how dare you heal a woman and Jesus is like well you've got ox and donkeys that you untie and lead the water and there's this woman a woman of Abraham not more important and that's how I know you see she she was a woman of Abraham that's how she was in the temple courts she she knew God's word she knew him and Jesus knew that and he said a woman of Abraham she had grown in faith even though she was afflicted and yet these rulers could not say that and that they would seek to have I not healed on that day when Jesus was there. But they'd rather I be bound. They'd rather keep me bound by this spirit than say I set free. And I think sometimes that's what our circumstances, that's what our life does, that's what the work of the enemy does. He'd rather I keep us bound than be set free. And Jesus calls them hypocrites. And it's interesting to note that the word hypocrite derives from the Greek word actor. And the word actor means that in the Jews, when you called them a hypocrite, the word actor, you, you, to be associated with that word because all the plays were Greek tragedies and they were sort of pornographic in those times. And a Jewish man couldn't even walk by a theatre and let his shadow touch the theatre because he'd become unclean. That's how, you know, that's how they, that's what they thought of the word hypocrite. That's what they thought of the word actor. And yet Jesus in the temple courts, it's a twofold insult. Because one is saying you're like an actor, you're a hypocrite, you're two-faced. And he's saying it in the, the full, the, the full, the full courts or the full synagogue. So everybody knew these hypocrites. And everyone would have been saying, ah, he's calling them that because they were two-faced. And then, you know, the woman, when she stands up, she praises God for what he's done. And they still couldn't say it. They still couldn't say a healing. They still couldn't say she was giving God thanks. The people did, and the people marvelled at what we were seeing. But I think the temple rulers, they didn't marvel. They were still bound by their spirit. They were still bound by their spirit of rules, by their spirit of legalism, by their spirit of what is right. And sometimes we're a bit like that ourselves, aren't we? We kind of sometimes see the wood for the trees. And many years ago, when I was young, I went and I decided I'd have a full new haircut. And I went off to the hairdressers and she said to me, I said, I, I mean, I've got a fringe now, but at that particular point, I didn't have a fringe. And I said to her, I said, oh, I'm, I'm looking for just a, you know, a little bit more of a modern cut and maybe a fringe. She went, oh, I've got just the type of fringe. Now, I thought it was only two types. I thought it was either long or a short fringe. She says, no, 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 there's a diagonal fringe. Now, really, at that particular point, I thought I might have had the presence of mind to say, what do you mean, a diagonal fringe? I went, oh, I didn't realise there was a third fringe. She says, oh, yes, there's a diagonal fringe. So I went, right. So anyway, she cut my hair very short. She flicked it out. She plastered on lots of, you know, trails here that would bring out my bone structure and she cut me fringe diagonal and I've got to be honest I looked at a clip I looked at it and she said to me well what do you think oh didn't it doesn't it bring out the bluey eyes well of course it brought out the blue my eyes because my fringe was cut right at the top of my head on a slant and I said oh yes it does it's lovely she said I knew you'd like it I knew you'd think it'd bring out your bone structure yes it did it did bring out my bone structure because you could only see my face because my hair was that short with a slanty fringe it was just the weirdest hair could i've ever had but instead of saying well, actually this i don't like or still having the presence of me in the very beginning to say this is not right i said yes i liked it 
I actually paid for it and I actually gave the girl a tip and I went out in. Thank you very much. It's lovely. It's so unusual. And then I got around the corner and I thought, what on earth is this? My hair is just hair. It grew out. But sometimes I feel like we're like that. We say, yes, we're healed. Yes, we've grown all together. Yes, it's great. Yes, it's wonderful. And yet we are bound. We are still bound. And God's saying, come, come to me. Come, son, daughter of Abraham. Come, come, by, come to your redeemer. Come to me, Jesus, your saviour, your redeemer. And let me unbound you. Let me set you free. Let me, let me draw near to you. And God just wants that for each and every one of us these coming few weeks. He wants us to be set free. He doesn't want us to have a spirit of fear. He wants us to be set free from anything that keeps us from entering his court with praise and thanksgiving and singing. And sometimes the things that bound we well, can't enter his court like that. We can't enter his court with praise and thanksgiving and singing. We enter them with sadness or we enter them with things within us that we know we need to be healed and changed from. And God is saying, please do that. Don't be like they don't 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 be bound. You can be set free. And as for the rulers, them weren't set free. I feel like them stayed in their boundless and we, we all have met people who we talk to, we speak to, and yet they're still broken many, many years on, yet they're still in grief many, many years on. And we we, we don't want that for each other. And Jesus doesn't want that for us. Our Redeemer longs for us to be set free. And I think that's the message that this woman brings. You know, she she went into the temple courts. She went there just to be with Jesus, even though she had been bound by the Spirit. She went there just to hear him, just to hear him speak. That's what she was longing for. Now, my Nana, you've heard us speak about my Nana many, many times. And she used to long to sit in the presence of Jesus. And she couldn't read or write. But anybody who could read, she would ask them to come in. And she'd ask them to, to, to read from the Bible. She loved hearing the word of God. She loved hearing Jesus' word. So, you know, this coming week, sit in his presence. Read the word of God. Jesus said to Jairus, just believe. And he's saying that to you today. He's saying, it, just believe. Just believe in me. And I can set you free. I can answer your prayers. And they might not be answered in the way you want. But Jesus will set you free. I'm just going to read you Psalm 91. And just a few verses. Which says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress in God whom I trust. God is our refuge and our fortress and in him we trust. Him who dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. And I'm saying that to you this week, I'm saying that you go to God and dwell in his presence, sit in the shadow of the Almighty and be healed. Don't be bound. Be healed in Jesus' name. Let me just pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for all of us who are watching this, Lord, who have a spirit of fear, who have things that need to be healed or need to be changed. Draw near to each and every one of us this coming week, Father. And I pray your healing, I pray your presence, and I pray your blessing. In Jesus' name, Amen.
faithful stand And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest
of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger than the King of glory, the King of all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. you've had a great morning i hope you enjoyed the service and what we'd like is for you to keep in touch and uh, as i said at the beginning we might be in isolation but let's not be isolated let's keep meeting up let's keep talking even in through the week get in touch with each other via uh, the church website the church links uh, twitter facebook whatever 
keep in touch and uh, keep in touch with people as well. FaceTime your friends, FaceTime your mates and uh, we hope to see you again uh, next week. Okay, God bless you all. See you soon. Take care and keep safe. Jesus is mine, and oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, and purchase of God, born of His Spirit. my story this is my song I'm praising my Savior all the day long and this is my story Lord this is my Praising my Savior all the time.
This is our story. 